Hey, good morning. This is John in the lovely village of Cook Saki. Fall has come to the Adirondack foothills. And I uh, wish I had some nicer scenery to show you. It's kind of cold and damp. Some people like this weather, you sick, twisted animals. <laughs> My mother loves it. But then again, she's a sick, twisted <laughs> Just kidding. Love you, Ma. Love. So, I got up this morning and... Um, I was thinking about something uh, that my nephew asked me a little while ago. We were out on a walk together and uh, I don't even remember how it came up. Out of nowhere, he asked me about hell. And I said, oh, has your mother been cooking again? <laughs> uh, just a little bit of vodka on the cornflakes this morning. Um, took me aback, really threw me back for a second. Uh, recently I uh, shared an insight that came to me once in a kapow, you know, Batman cartoon, one of those explosions, kapow. Um, children, in regard to children, the relationship with adults is we're their guardians and they are our teachers. We have to watch out for their well-being, and then they, in turn, teach us. Boy, did he teach me that day. I really had to step back and go, all right, <clears throat> what am I going to say to this impressionable young mind about the concept of hell? Because the way I was raised, and I intuitively knew even as a kid that there was something inherently wrong with the whole idea of a hell, of some uh, future punishment. Karma, as it's known in the Eastern traditions, something you did wrong now is going, you're gonna have to pay for in the future. And big time, not just pay for it, but you're gonna suffer, buddy. You're going down. You're going down like a garment bag full of jello. And you're gonna burn, see? <clears throat> so I really had to think about that for a minute as I was talking to my nephew. Hell. Well, the short insight to that question is actually another question. What do I think of hell? You know, what is my idea of hell? And um, from my experience, first of all, I'm going to say flat out, there is no hell. Not the way we were taught. I'm not buying it. Uh, I don't think any reasonable person would buy it. To me, it's simply that. It's a concept that somebody came up with and went, ooh, look, here's a stick we can hit the sheeple with. They'll all go in our direction if we convince them there's a hell. There is no hell. There is no hell. Hell is what your ego makes of the present, of this moment, right now. Anything you're dragging from your past into this moment or drawing from your future into this moment is your personal hell. If you stop a minute and think about that, you will have to agree it might not be the hell you were taught is there, but it's a hell. It's not a, it's not a fun place to be. I used to hear this old saying, and, and many of these old sayings now are suddenly awakening something in me but I it was a stupid old AA saying it used to me I hated it but it really works you know yesterday's history tomorrow's a mystery all we have is today that's why it's called the present it's a gift that's true it's, I agree with that the other thing they used to say was one foot in yesterday one foot in tomorrow and you wind up pissing on today same thing, but a little less classy. It's a little more down to earth. I would have said you take a dump on today, but whatever. 
But I really had to ask myself before I could say anything to this developing young mind. Uh, you know, what are what what is my hell? Am I doing everything I can to release myself from my own personal hell? The Course of Miracles says you have two emotions. Two. That's it. Regardless of the many shades they may take. One emotion God gave you, the other you made. And it makes the distinction between what God creates and what we make. Anything that is created is eternal. And anything we make has a shelf life. So the two emotions are love and fear. Again, we have many shades and levels that we vacillate between. But one is our uh, original state. And one is our man-made state or human-made state. And um, it's, it's very easy to figure out which one you're in. How do you feel? How do you feel? What's your, what's your attitude like? What's your demeanor like? What is your temperament like? It's the only proper use of judgment. We've all made all kinds of cases against ourselves with that judgment. We have uh, prosecuted ourselves in the court of the ego. But I can tell you with great certainty, if you take that case to the higher court of the Holy Spirit, as we were taught in Catholicism, the Holy Spirit will simply dismiss that case. So he asked me about forgiveness. And I remembered something I read once. You know, what, what's the point of forgiveness? Hell, you know, big, deep concepts for a kid. But I don't know that most of us have ever really tackled them. So again, I remembered something I read and I said, well, you shouldn't ask God for forgiveness. What? Yeah, that's what I've learned. Don't ask God for forgiveness. Because he never condemned you. But you've never forgiven yourself. Most people can't let go in their mind of the things that they're holding on to that are creating their own personal hell right here, right now. So I thought to myself, really the best way to teach him that there is no hell to quickest way to teach him that is for me to be in heaven. I don't mean dead. <laughs> Although I felt like it sometimes. I mean, show him a heavenly attitude. Demonstrate a heavenly attitude. Because, once again, really simple stuff. You can't give what you don't have. What am I going to teach this kid? There is no hell. If I'm going, listen, man, you can listen to me, man. Trust me. This is no hell. I, I, it's like those intervention shows I used to watch. I understand those people were well-intentioned. But how are you going to guilt trip somebody into any kind of healing when you're not healed? When you show up going, you have to stop. You got to stop. 90% of what you say to other people is for yourself. So, shut up. I'm talking over here. <laughs> I get my I get my shotgun hunting season. Ninety percent of what we say to other people is for you. When they're saying you have to stop, you're talking to yourself. If I'm trying to explain to a 13-year-old developing mind, there is no hell. Do I really believe it? I had to check myself. I do. I do or do not. <laughs> I'm going to go even a step further. I know. 
There's no hell, there's no place where somebody's going to, especially a 13 year old kid, really anybody. This has to apply to everybody. You can't say, well, this jackass has to go to hell. Um, I I'm not buying that. Not buying it. Oh, that guy that killed all those people, he's going to hell. Yeah, I, I think this is a rule that's going to apply to everybody. It's got to apply evenly to everybody or it's not a universal principle. It's something man-made and it won't stand. It's not going to stand. So I have to say thank you to my nephew for challenging me, for teaching me, for showing me how to question and stand in my own newly developing belief system because we're all just kids. The only difference between him and me was a couple of three, four decades. <laughs> I still look good for my height. So anyway, I hope if you're suffering, struggling with uh, some kind of personal hell, um, I, I know it's hard. God, I know, I know it's hard. I know it's hard. Give yourself some time. Sit down. Quiet your head. The, the best, the quickest way, really the only way I found, I found no other way. You have to develop some type of system to undo what you've done. You know, that's the, that's, that's the key with a miracle. A miracle doesn't do anything. It simply undoes. It's it's like the clouds in front of the sun. The clouds can't put out the sun. Once you undo the clouds, the sun is always there. Darkness has no source. It's only the absence of life. Fear has no source. It's merely the absence of love. Hell has no place. It's simply the absence of heaven. So have a heavenly day. And once again, thank you to my nephew, for being my teacher, all my nieces and nephew, everybody, actually, everybody, thank you.